I hope everybody's doing well, uh, family, friends. Um, during this time, uh, I've talked to a lot of our players. That is our, our primary concern when we call um, folks. Um, also, uh, obviously, a shout out to the, the team that's out there with healthcare, our stores. Uh, there's a lot of people working out there and um, giving us services at a difficult time. And um, that's uh, the most important thing right now is everybody's safety and, and health. So um, just want to give a shout out to all those folks that are working out there and hope all, all is well. So, Nancy, I hope you're doing well. My first question for you today is, can you kind of tell me about how you decided to hire Scott to the Illinois basketball program? Uh you know, Scott Merritt has uh, an incredible winning background um, from a player at Marquette, you know, Final Four, um, played in the Final Four. Um, his experience at Marquette in the women's basketball program, a program that he helped turn around, um, you know, they had incredible success the last several seasons. Uh, so he comes from winning. Uh, he knows the Midwest uh, recruiting-wise. And, um, you know, when you're out working on the road and you're in gyms watching, you know, as a head coach, you watch people that really work hard. And, and Scott Merritt is one of those people. And uh, it was in, in, in someone that we felt would really help our program, uh, player development uh, in our post position. So it was like uh, uh, the best of a lot of world that he, he's going to bring to our program. Hey, Nancy, it's uh, Jeremy Warner from 24-7 Sports. I'm just wondering, recruiting-wise, uh, why was he appealing to you, or what kind of impact do you think he can make there? Well, you know, we went up against Marquette a lot of time, a lot with kids. Um, you know, there's Illinois kids at Marquette, and we want to stop that. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was one of those, uh, you watch someone that does their job, you watch someone that knows the Midwest um, in Illinois, uh, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, he's got great connections. So recruiting-wise, it's obviously an area we want to get better at and continue to grow, and Scott really fit that bill. Um, like I said, he, he's, he's very well-known in the women's basketball uh, side of this, so I, I, I was really excited when he showed interest and accepted the position, but I think, um, as I mentioned, it's just multiple. You want to get better as a, as a program, and he's, I think he's going to help us um, a great deal. Can you kind of take us into how um, you made the decision to, to, to make a change to your staff and, and how you kind of went about getting Scott um, at, at a time when obviously interviewing could be pretty difficult? Yeah, Scott showed a lot of trust in me. Um, and, you know, I, I really respect the trust he gave um, us. Uh, you know, you know, like I said, I had seen him. I'd seen him out. We had run into each other. Um, you know, he's 6'10", so you can't really miss him on the side of the court. <laughs> So, um, you know, he, he was present, and I, I, I love workers, and he's a worker. And so, you know, when we started to open the position and, and talked to him, called him up, told him our vision, uh, you know, one of the things that he asked about is winning. And, you know, I was like, that's, that's what I'm here for. You know, the, and I think when I explained the whole building and where we are, you know, you'd be honest. And um, he's a guy that loves, he loves challenges. He's done it before. Uh, and so we talked, talked about Champaign, we talked about the University of Illinois, we talked about Josh Whitman. Um, there's a lot of exciting things going on here, you know, the building up and being re revitalized. So um, I, I have to respect him because his family and him said yes uh, without um, actually being down here. And that, that tells you a lot about him and his trust. And uh, I respect him and his family a great deal for making that move in a tough time. Joe Vazelli from the Champagne News Gazette. Um, Coach, how much communication have you been able to have with your team? Um, and, and how is this sort of the, the change of organized team activities? How does that change the, what the schedule would normally be like at this time of year? I'm um, getting ready for the next season. Well, right now, um, we are, uh, you know, I've been calling our players. There's two ways you can do this. You can do it in, in groups, and you see a lot of Zoom calls. We have done the same thing. We, we've we organized those. But I also think it's really important that you touch each of those kids personally. I've called them um, two times already, talked to them individually since uh, they left campus. I did, I did let them have spring break, and then, you know, we've been calling. Uh, so they get a chance. Uh, there's a lot of kids getting dogs right now. That's what I found out. Um, great time to train them, but... You know, we've been we've been in those kind of contact. Also, also Kylie Fletcher has been in 
contact with every kid because every kid has a unique situation at home and availability of how they can stay in shape and be ready when we do get back on the court. Um, she's tailor-made um, individual workouts for all those players. Um, you know, we've got kids from the Virgin Islands all the way up to Detroit. And talking to them, making sure, again, like their families are safe and they're well. But then we do talk about, um, you know, what they're doing. We I called them up right before classes started, you know, because a lot of them are online, trying to make sure that they stay, um, you know, in a, in a disciplined format so that they can uh, study, get up, get their work done. So there's a lot of layers that we want to talk about. Um, you know, we're going to have individual meetings as we would if they were here. Um, talking to them about getting better and um, also talking about our new players that are coming in. So it's a lot of layers, uh, you know, based on one, making sure we just stay in contact with them as individuals, not just as a team. Nancy, you, you, have here with Fox, Illinois. you mentioned uh, Scott working well in the post, you know, being a, a six foot ten former post player himself. How do you kind of see him maybe helping a player like Kennedy Miles, who had such a strong freshman season? Where do you think her game can maybe go, and how does a coach like Scott maybe help her get to that next level? You know, I, I think one of the people, the, you know, when we were talking about um, with the team, when we, we had a meeting right before they left, and uh, Kennedy asked the question, you know, well, Coach, what what are you looking for? And, I, you know, and she's a kid that wants to get better, and I know Scott Merritt's going to help her with that. Uh, you know, I think just the, the ability, um, she's got a great foundation. Um, you know, and one of the exciting things is that, you know, we have other posts this year. We've been kind of, uh, you know, when we had two post players go out, you know, in the middle of our year, Nancy, Nancy P did come back late, but she'd been out two years and we lost to McKenzie. So we were really playing without, you know, two post players and four players. Uh, they had to play the five. I think Scott, I know Kennedy is really, really excited. So the one thing you have is a coach that knows the game at an elite level, and you have a player that wants to be elite. And that's the combination that you need. And so I think Scott's just, you know, he's been there, he's done that, he's been in the women's game. He knows the position he wants. He wants to work with the post. And uh, it was a perfect fit. And I think we have highly motivated kids that just are going to be sponges right now uh, when he gets on the court. Hey, Nancy, this is Gavin Good with 247. Um, obviously, you know, Petra an uh, entered the transfer portal. I was just wondering how big of a loss is, you know, replacing your leading scorer and, and, and moving on from her going forward? You know, Petra um, had, a, you know, a good, great senior year, was our leading scorer. Um, you know, when she came into the office, what you – what you have to respect is if a player can, comes in emotionally and is not, you know, happy with this, it wasn't that. Um, yeah, she she been five years here, um, felt like she wanted to do something different. I'm going to support that. Um, you know, we told her we'd love her to stay, of course. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's it is is going to be, um, you know, points that we have to we have to make up for. I, I think one of the keys for us this year was when teams could, you know, pretty much scheme and we were so small inside, it, you know, Petra didn't have much of an opportunity even when those score, those points were being scored. They covered her pretty tight. I'm hoping, you know, our presence inside next year, we've, we've got bigger kids now um, coming in that people are going to have to choose a little bit more differently than they did. So, uh, and I think the kids that are here uh, accept that challenge. Um, you know, we know that, but the page has been turned, and our job is to, um, you know, get better. And and I, I, I think we have players coming in. We have players here that are accepting that challenge. With signing three players in November and, and also adding a mid-year transfer in Ava Rubin, how do you feel like your recruiting class is sort of shaping up for next season? It's, you know, the first year I was here, we, we graduated one player. The second year, we graduated two. So... Um, this is a big year and who we brought in. We've got a lot of players coming in. We're bigger. I wanted to get bigger. We, we were competing in the big 10, um, you know, with uh, some four players that really, really worked hard, but, um, we now have some size inside with Eva, obviously at six, five. Um, we brought a, a, you know, a couple other players, uh, freshmen in that, uh, you know, we feel, um, are, you know, you, you try to coach to your style of play. We want to pick the pace up. We want to take care better of the ball. But, you know, I, I'm i excited about this, this uh, you know, class. I'm excited about um, 
where we're heading in the sense of be a lot of new faces out there next year and uh, a little young, but I think we have some, you know, with Eva coming in as a junior, um, some older players to kind of mix our, our young and old, but it, it's going to look a lot different and uh, I'm excited about that. Coach, your program was obviously able to finish the season before all the COVID-19 stuff really kind of started blowing up in the U.S., um, but how is this affecting your developmental timeline with the team and in, in, in going forward now? You know, I think every coach would love to be in the gym right now. Every coach would love to have the summer to prepare and get and get better. Um, I, I, the, the, we have to trust two things. We, we have to follow the what is right and this is what's right we understand everybody's in this i don't want players um in gyms right now doing things because they feel that pressure we want them to be self-motivated which the one thing i do know just listening to the players right now and i don't think we're unique we are going to be so hungry when we get back on the court and we have to build on that hunger and that excitement uh, that when we get back there's going to be another different level of appreciation are we unique in that way no uh, but we're definitely going to be motivated and make that our unique uh, desire. Just listening to the players, uh, they can't wait. To be honest, when we had a meeting right before they left for spring break, uh, that room was very excited. We sat down in a um, very open and uh, inviting area, I guess what I want to say, in space. And those players shared what their vision was and what they want to do. And... Um, you know we can't be on the court right now, but the excitement and what the dedication they have right now, I think, is already coming through, and so I'm excited for them. Hey, Nancy. Peyton Watson with Illini Sports Night here. You spoke a little bit about Kennedy, but all three freshmen performed very well this season. Speaking about Terry and Peebles, what, what do you see as their ceiling, and how do you, I guess, when you speak of all three of them, do you kind of see them as a trio that will have a large impact on your team for many years to come? Thank you very much. That, that's exactly right. I mean, they averaged 20-plus um, minutes or somewhere in that range, which even when you look at the top five players in the country, someone told me their average is you know, about the same or less. And these, these three, we, we feel like we worked hard to recruit that class. It was the first you know, real class that you know, the first year you really inherit, the second year you have about three months. And this one is one that I think if you talk to the three of them, they are excited. Um, they get what we're, you know, what we're doing here, um, and um, you know, I, I, they, they were freshmen. We played a lot of times. If you look down the court, there were three freshmen in a sub, and they were out there. Um, and I think that experience is something that you know is going to be invaluable. Um, they saw the Big Ten at a different place instead of sitting on the bench, and so um, they're fired up. Uh, I think you're right. That's a, a cornerstone of where we're heading, and I, I was excited for getting that class and excited with where we're going to lead us. And although we had a Nancy, it's Jeremy on the road, yeah. Hey, Nancy, it's Jeremy again. Sorry, um, you obviously you took over a program that had a big rebuild in front of it. But three years in, what do you feel like you've taken it so far? Like, how have you grown? And what are your expectations for the next steps in progress during this next year? I think everybody expected more wins, and I'm one of them. Um, and so I get, I get the, um, you know, the evaluation of when they, we get to the Big Ten. I also know that uh, if you you were out there and you saw when we did have when we lost our two posts this year, that really hurt us. Um, and trying to get any, you have to have someone at the rim at the Big Ten level to stop play going at the rim and get offensive boards and just make the game a lot simpler. We had to do a lot of creating, so. With this graduation, of, like I said, there's six players that are leaving the program. Uh, respected all those kids. They, they hung with us. They stayed and they worked their tails off. Um, on the flip side, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity. I feel like in some respects we're, we're starting at a different spot. Um, I'm owning that. I own the, I own the last three years um, on me. But uh, there's just a lot of circumstances, I think, that my expectations is, you know, no matter what we talk about with culture, culture set, um, you know, and I've done this done long enough that, you know, it's time to, to turn those the win-loss come in a different direction. That's my expectation. That's why I'm here, and that's what we're trying to do, doing it the right way. 
Uh, and uh, that's the one thing. If someone said you can not sleep because of losses or you can not sleep because you don't do it the right way. Um, I've lost my sleep because of our win-loss record, but I'm not going to lose sleep about how I do it. Thank you. Coach, you mentioned that, you know, this is the most players that have graduated from your program since you've been at Illinois. How does just having a roster that's, you know, more tailored and put together by you with your recruits, how does that change things going forward for you guys? Uh, I've always told folks that, you know, when I got here, it's not someone else's team and then it becomes my team. These kids that, you know, were in the program when I was here are Illini. I respect them. Um, I think the, the difference um, in the recruiting process, we, as head coaches, you all have different personalities. Your personalities, whether you mean to or not, just come through in how you recruit. And so that is just a natural um, change that will happen. So, again, I, I, I have the greatest respect um, for all those players. When I talk to them, I'm making sure they're staying on top of their, their books to graduate. They gave, they gave um, their, their uh, loyalty to Illinois. Um, but it's just it's it's just a natural transition, and um, that's where we're at right now, and we're embracing it. But we, I certainly have I embraced players that were hurt here and, and stayed with us through that through some tough tough three years. Yeah, coach, you mentioned you know that it, it has been a little bit tough these three years. Um, you you've had, you've had such a winning pedigree throughout your career, and that was um, you know that you brought to Illinois. What do you just how tough is it, you know, when the results haven't gone your way, um, especially given the career you've had? If, uh, if it wasn't tough and I didn't like it and I didn't, um, uh, just didn't feel, to be honest, uh, you know, bad and awful at times, I, I should quit. Um, I know that every day that I get up, uh, I, I think about Illinois, I'll be out, Illinois women's basketball and how to get this thing turned up, turned around and put 100% into it. And that's what I can control. I can control today and I do that. And um, that's what I do. But it is tough and it is hard. But I figure if, it, if I feel any differently, I probably should stop doing this. And what I ask my players to do and what I have to do, you have to have the courage to put it all out there and do your best. And then, um, but if you stop, if you start wondering and start questioning and you don't really care, then uh, be done with the job. And that's not where I'm at. And that's why we keep you know, grinding and working. And, and that's what I believe in is today. And, you know, you, you get your share of criticisms. You hear that, stuff, you know, and I get it. I understand it. Um, and my job is to, to keep working and control what I can control. And this is what it is today. So, yeah, I, if you're a competitor, you can't, you don't like this. And that's what I am. And so that's why um, we keep at this and we trust what we're doing and we treat people right and we push our kids the right way. And um, that's that's what uh, I base every day on. Hey, Nancy, it's Jeremy again. I'm just wondering, uh, you know Josh more than most people uh, at Illinois. Um, what, what's it been like to see him grow into this job and especially lead through something unprecedented like this? You know, his leadership, uh, I'm, you're right, I've known him. I've seen him take over um, our program when he was at Washington University and then watch uh, the development here. You know, and you just watch his sports, his trust in coaches, his belief in what we're doing here, his belief in Illinois is so deep. But when you really see something happen like this, it's at another level. Um, when we're talking about taking care of our, our, our student athletes, and that's the first thing and foremost he's, he's talked about is um, – our, our kids here, our players, our student athletes, his leadership there has been incredible. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad I'm with him. I think our staff is glad he's, he, we're with him. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been an incredible journey. And it tells you more about, you know, a man right now in this type of situation than um, anything else. So I'm glad, I'm glad I'm here for a lot of reasons. But this has really taken us to another level of understanding his leadership. Hey, Coach, it's Gavin again. Um, you mentioned Nancy P. coming back from injury, um, you know, in, in January. Um, just wondering, like, how big is, is her return for this program? And, you know, what sort of, like, what sort of work does she have left to do to, you know, get into her full form and really get back into, you know, what she can do? You know, I, I, I've always felt 
for Nance because she got here, we, you know, the first year, and then she had two injuries. So she hadn't played for two years, and um, coming in in January, it, that's a hard, um, right in the middle of Big Ten. That was a, a big order, and, you know, she didn't get a, a lot of playing time just trying to get her back. She used to being hit. I mean, when you go through an injury like that, there's two things that are going on. It's the physical part, but it's also the mental part. And, um, you know, trying to be, you know, put her back out there, but also be sensitive, you know, it's unfortunate what's happening now because her ability just to, to be out in the court and work. We just got her home, I believe, last Friday. Um, you know, we were working real hard to get her back to her family. Uh, a lot of the, this wasn't easy for her, so that was our main concern right now. But we're, we're hoping that, you know, when this all settles down, that she gets a chance to have a, a different start to the, the year than she had. And I think that combination, as I mentioned, we had McKenzie out too, so – um, with injury, so it was it was tough, and I hope I hope the best that we can get her back on the court as soon as this all is over. You mentioned getting her back home, and I think that's a, a really interesting point that you know for international athletes on campus here, because uh, there's kind of a, a lot. How how tough was it to get her back to Greece, and what was that process like? You know, it was. Uh, I have to give a shout out to uh, Maria Woods, our our women's uh, um, senior director. She uh, who we report to, and we, uh, her and uh, Nancy had to change the, for the flights several times, um, you know, because what happened, it was like she was going to go through Turkey, and then Turkey closed their borders, and then she had to go through Amsterdam, and it was, it was several things we had to do, and I have to shout out to our administration, um, it took a little bit, um, we kept in contact with Nancy, but we, you know, she got home, uh, we're so happy she's with her family, but it, it, it tells you how Illinois takes care of their players um, once they get here. It's not one of those recruitment, you know, try to figure it out after that. So I, I was really happy Maria was able to help Nancy get, get home after several flight changes. Nancy, this is Scott Rich from the News Gazette. You've got, I think, a couple open scholarships still for next season. I was wondering if the plan was to fill them and maybe you know, if it was, if the situation has changed, how you, you know, maybe intended to go about doing that, and maybe just kind of what you're doing recruiting wise when you can't physically go out and recruit right now. Uh, recruiting hasn't stopped. I mean, it, it's, it's been adjusted obviously because no home visits all, but we are still actively working on uh, our class. We do have two full. We have to look at the 21 class, how many we want left for that. But we're still uh, working through that. If the right players come up, we are definitely still out there. The portal is as active even during this time. Uh, so, you know, we get the right players in the right situation. We, we know where we're at depth chart-wise. We feel much better about our inside game. And we'll keep we'll keep working that. This is nothing that really stops uh, making a lot of calls, uh, making sure, you know, you keep developing those relationships with the 21s, but we, a lot of times when you've worked on kids before, they, they may come back. So we're, we're working um, when they come on the portal, and it's not done yet. So um, if I fill the 15, I will because of the, the players that we need. If it's not that case, then I'll stay. But uh, it's case by case right now with two left.